Hello, how are you? Since it is still January, I'm making even more reading plans for this year because it is always fun to put together a reading list, isn't it? And because we are probably facing at least a couple more months of lockdown here in London, I want to have some really long stories and uh, books that I can lose myself in over this time. And last year, some of my absolute favorite books were really long novels. And I count a big book as a book that's over 500 pages long. You know, I think that's enough space um, to be, get fully lost in the worlds that the author is uh, creating. And I just appreciated it so much, you know, as this remove from reality, you know, it allowed me to escape. And I know for a lot of people, they don't have the, the concentration or, or the time because they're busy working at home or caring for their family um, that to, uh, to read a really long book. But personally, I really appreciated reading lawn books during this time. And uh, so I have several more books um, that I'm planning to, to read this year and that I'm hoping to get to and that, that I think look really good. Um, it's sort of a mixture of um, some of them are new books that have only just coming out this year. Um, some are really long books that have been sitting on my shelf for ages. And then there's um, a couple of classics that uh, I'm hoping to, to get to as well and um, that I've, I've always meant to, to read. Uh, but I'd really be interested to know if you have some big books that you're hoping to tackle this year and read and how you feel about big books in general, because I know there's a big debate among uh, critics and readers about whether uh, long novels are really necessary. I mean, there's an argument that uh, that a book doesn't need any more than 200 or 250 pages to tell its story. And that's the ideal length for, for some readers. But I think it really depends on the story and you know the ambition of, of the author of what they're they're trying to say in their story and you know if you really love a story um you you hope that it won't end so sometimes I think it's a, a massive benefit that if uh, if there's another several hundred pages to go um, but obviously that can work in the the wrong way as well if you're really not enjoying a book and you're facing another few hundred pages that can make it start to feel like a real slog um, so yeah I think it's really interesting how to get the, the balance right. But anyway, I'm going to um, talk through some of these, these books. So first off, there is Cathedral by Ben Hopkins. This is a new novel, which is just coming out this month. I'm um, being published by Europa. And uh, I think it sounds really good because it is set in the 13th century in a town. It's all centered around the construction of a cathedral in the town. And it follows the story of a number of citizens in the town as they get involved in the economic and political power plays and struggles um, that, that are going on in this community um, that is all centered around the construction of this cathedral. And uh, and yeah, I, I just think that sounds like an intriguing story. And because I loved Hilary Mantel's novels so much last year and getting you know stuck into this um, historical period from a long time ago, hundreds of years ago, um, I think it'll be really interesting to, to get into another story like that. Now, I'm also slightly trepidating because like with uh, the Thomas Cromwell novels, I was slightly ignorant about some of the uh, politics and history around the, that whole Tudor period. And I think I know even less about the 13th century than I do about Tudor England. Uh, so, you know, I'm slightly worried that I might be alienated if it gets into some of the detail of, of this period and, and I just don't really understand what's going on. But I'm willing to give it a try and, and see how it goes. And I've heard really great things about it. And uh, yeah, this is quite a long novel. I think it clocks in over 600, um, about 620 pages long. And Ben Hopkins is, I think this is his debut novel, um, but he's a filmmaker and screenwriter as well. So I think it's quite interesting to see how uh, someone who comes from that background will create a novel. Next is another new novel that's being published at the beginning of February here in the UK, although it was published in the US last year and I mentioned it um, in a video towards the end of last year when I was talking about the best books of the year lists and and this novel appeared on a number of those lists and it's um, Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth and uh, this is a novel um, which is also like uh, almost I think it's about 615 pages long and it's a story that begins at the beginning of the 1900s in an all-girls school and how a number of 
the girls at this school are mysteriously dying. And so the, the school sh closes shortly after that. Um, and then it goes forward in time to the end of the 1900s when a film crew is, is making a film about the um, apparent curse um, surrounding this school and telling the stories of the, the deaths of these girls. And as they are starting to make this film, then um, this, uh, this sort of curse and the, the story of the film become intertwined. And, and so it's um, difficult to tell where the Hollywood story ends and reality begins. And, and I, I like that there's this sort of tension and this is described as a, a modern Gothic novel. Um, it has a, a lot of praise on it, including from Sarah Waters, um, who's a, a writer I absolutely love and uh, I trust her opinion. So, um, so yeah, I'm really curious and excited to, to read this and get stuck into this story. Next is a novel that was first published last year and it's been sitting on my shelves and I've been really wanting to, to get to it. Um, it's The Blind Light by Stuart Evers. And this is a novel set over a 50 year period in um, British history, starting in the 1950s with a man who's doing his national service and he's based at a military camp called Doomstown uh, that's preparing for the aftermath of an atomic attack. And um, so it tells his story and his experiences on this camp, um, but also that of his wife and their relationship. And it follows their story over um, this 50 year period. So it's telling their, their personal story, but also the, the story of Britain over that period and the, how the political changes and social and economic changes in the country over that time. And um, Stuart Evers is such an excellent writer. His, his writing is so beautiful. I've only read read a short story collection of his um, that was called Your Father Sends His Love. And I absolutely love that collection. I've been wanting and wanting to, to read more from him. And this is his big epic novel that he's, he's written. And um, so, yeah, this is 500 in about 500 and. 35 pages long. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Then I have a novel which has been sitting on my shelves for a few years now, and that is The Nicks by Nathan Hill. So there was a lot of buzz and excitement around this novel at the time, and I just didn't get to, to reading it, um, though I really wanted to, but I think because it is quite a long novel, it's like 620 pages long, um, that I just didn't get to it. Um, but I was, I was drawn to it because the uh, main character in it is called Sam. Samuel Anderson Anderson. And since I'm Eric Anderson, it just um, sort of endeared me to it and, and intrigued me um, to, to read this story. Um, so it's his story um, where he's a, um, a teacher, and um, but he's at a local community college, but he's not really invested in that. And he's been estranged from his mother um, ever since she walked out on their family when he was a child. But then she re-enters his life and he becomes really intrigued about her and wants to find out more about her, her story and finds out that there's much more to her than he ever um, thought there was. Um, she's become a political protester um, in engaged in, in a number of different protests. And um, so, yeah, he, he sort of tracks down her story and um, becomes reacquainted with her. And um, yeah, and I heard really good things about this at the time. And there's, um, there's a blurb on it by John Irving at the time, who I know is one of the main inspirations um, for this author. I looked up the author um, to see if he's written anything since then. And I don't think he has published anything um, since then. But through his website, um, there's a really interesting link um, looking at the books that are his main inspiration, some of his all-time favorites, as well as what he's been reading and enjoying recently. And because um, I'm a nosy person, I, I, I always find it interesting to, to know what authors have been reading and enjoying and what their influences are. But um, but I know John Irving is one of his big influences. Um, and um, and though I find it quite funny that um, he, he says that Nathan Hill is a maestro of being terrific, um, which is a sort of silly kind of like dad opinion to have um, about a writer's work. But um, but I'm sure the the author was like overjoyed when he got that um, that approval from an author that he's been so influenced by. But but yeah, I'm really curious to to um, read this story. Then I have a classic novel which I've always wanted to get to, and I feel sort of ashamed that I've never read it. Though I know we shouldn't feel ashamed of not reading the classics, but uh, but but because this is considered a great gay classic, um, I feel like I really should have read it. And that is The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall, which was first published in 19. 
1928 to quite a lot of scandal and it was actually banned here in Britain and um, so all the copies of it were destroyed at the time and it's interesting that this um, vintage edition of the novel um, includes um, some information about that whole trial and um, the, the whole scandal uh, around this novel and why it was banned. Um, so yeah, Radcliffe Hall, um, and it's interesting in, in including all of that, um, it includes some some photos of the, the author and her, her lovers. Um, so she came from, Radcliffe Hall came from an upper class family and, um, and she just, yeah, always had a uh, uh, dressed more like a man and um, yeah, didn't really fit in with the society at the time. And this follows the story of a Victorian woman um, who was quite like Radcliffe Hall. It's a semi-autobiographical novel and it's about her um, struggles, you know, dealing with that and the, the pressures of society at that time and trying to find a place where she actually belongs. And um, so it's quite interesting that although Radcliffe Hall wrote several novels, this is the only one that explicitly dealt with homosexual content and I wonder if she you know only did that because um, there was such a scandal around it and uh, but uh, but yeah I'm so curious to, to finally read this story and uh, yeah it is quite a long novel so it's 581 pages long so I think that's probably one of the reasons I never got around to it but uh, but yeah I'm hoping to read it soon and then finally as I talked about in my reading goals for the year video I want to get to reading Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy which I've never Never read before and I know that it's three distinct novels but because they are stories that very much follow on from each other they are sort of a, a whole piece um, like Hilary Mantel's Thomas Cromwell series and together it amounts to around 1100 pages long um, so it's quite a lot and uh, so it starts with Northern Lights um, which is the story of Lyra which is a, a girl who lives in a parallel universe where science theology and magic are all intertwined with each other and it's her quest um, to to find a, a lost friend of hers and it, and it follows the the story from there and I know this is a much beloved classic I mean it's a recent classic that was um, written at the, the end of the 90s or mid 90s and and then into the early 2000s um, and one which is continuing as um, Philip Pullman is writing prequels to these novels um, so so yeah I I'm really hoping to, to get to this and I have this beautiful Everyman's Library edition of, of the novels. Um, so uh, I think it'll be really enjoyable to read. But yeah, all together, um, these books will keep me quite busy, won't they? It's it's a lot of pages uh, to get through. But, um, but I'm hoping I'll really love some of these stories and just get completely lost in them. Um, so let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and your thoughts about them, um, which you think I should get to first. Uh, but also if you have any big books that you're hoping to read over the course of this year um, and if you just really enjoy big books in, in general. So I will chat to you again soon and happy reading everyone. Bye-bye.